telling us to enjoy it while they're young. But our days are filled with chaos and stress and cooking and endless laundry piles. Where's the time to enjoy anything? Yeah, that's what I always thought too. There's so much I have to do. When do I find time for peace and joy and happiness when I barely have time to sleep? Mama, it's time for a shift. You can be a happy mom. Yeah, it's possible. If I can, you can. Trust me. I've been a mess. I've been depressed. I've been overwhelmed. I've been to the bottom of the pits. And I've risen. I've grown. I've bloomed. And it all started when I realized I didn't have to anything. I get to. It is my privilege and my honor and my divine responsibility to be the queen of my home. It's not a burden. I'm not the janitor and the lunch lady. I'm in charge. I'm the ruler. I'm the chaos coordinator. I'm the calm in the storm. I don't have to anything. I get to. So do you. So let's rise, mamas. Adjust your crown. Accept your responsibility. And change the effing world. It's all in the way you choose to see it. You're listening to I Get To, the podcast with Brittany Clarkson. That's me. Hey, beautiful. Welcome back to another episode of I Get To. I want to chat today. I don't even know how to start this. Okay. I want to chat today about quitting things. I did an episode a while back about quitting. That was totally different. That was like quitting activities and things that like like downsizing your schedule, kind of quitting. Um, This kind of quitting is like changing your life. Quitting things that are not good for you. Not just things that don't fulfill you, but quitting things that are bad for you. Okay? I don't drink anymore. I quit drinking. Uh, Very, very occasionally, I will like taste somebody's drink, but I, I won't have my own drink in my hand like ever. Um, because I don't like who I become when I drink and I don't like how, I don't like the threat of walking down a road I don't want to be on. So I, I have never been an alcoholic and claiming sobriety felt really weird because like everyone else's sober story is so moving and it's such a testimonial and like they went through so much, everything was so bad and then they gave it up and it was really hard for them to give it up. And then I felt like really weird being like, I can't join that club because I never had it bad. I just like stopped drinking. I didn't overcome addiction. But here's the thing. Like I have overcome addictions in other areas of my life. I struggle with addictions in other areas of my life. My addictions aren't drugs and alcohol. But they are still things that my brain will obsess over and tell me to make bad choices. To satisfy the dopamine drip. You know? I get highly and easily addicted to um, like watching TV or eating junk food, Um, coffee. The way I'm addicted to coffee made me afraid to become addicted to alcohol in the same way. And it's when I started seeing patterns and habits that I, I kind of, I made a realization Okay. So here's what was happening is I had gotten to a point where I was drinking as a reward for surviving the day. Do you see the problem with that? The point of life isn't to survive the day. That is literally the bare minimum of your potential surviving the day. That doesn't deserve a reward. And using alcohol as a reward is like a really stupid idea. It is. I'm sorry if you do celebrate with alcohol but the concept of rewarding yourself 
with a substance that like, what is it? it it's, it's something that like calms you down or like makes you not totally present anymore. It is a dumb concept. It really is. Um, I mean, I've done it before. I've celebrated with alcohol so many times in the past, but when you, when you get outside of it and you realize like what alcohol does to you and using it to celebrate kind of like you really want to detach from your present moment and get like weird in your head instead of being fully present in the moment that you're trying to celebrate. I don't know. That's not really what we're totally here to talk about. So I wasn't getting drunk or even tipsy all the time, but I had gotten in the habit of like having a glass of wine every day um, as my reward for just surviving the day and doing literally the bare minimum, Um, which I'm all for doing the bare minimum, like being okay with the bare minimum, but we don't need to be celebrating that. Like, woohoo, I did absolutely nothing of excellence today. Um, Let's celebrate the extra. Let's celebrate the milestones. Let's not celebrate the mundane. Um, Let's be comfortable with doing enough and not feeling guilt over not doing more. But that doesn't mean that we need to celebrate and break out the champagne for barely getting by. But I realized that I was developing a habit. So I I wasn't addicted to the alcohol in the sense of like, My body would notice if I wasn't drinking, but I was developing a habit of drinking regularly and I was developing a habit of drinking as a reward for literally not doing anything extra. And what happened was it was the middle of the day and I got the idea because the kids were being very childish and loud and I got the idea that I should start day drinking because I deserve it, Um, you know, to reward myself for being in the same room with three very rambunctious children who are acting like children, which is exactly how they should act because they are children. But my my brain had kind of gotten in these habits of thinking my kids should be calm and quiet all the time. And if they're not, I deserve a reward for tolerating them. Um. And to think that that reward should be alcohol was a bad idea. And it was right then in that moment where I was considering having a hard cider in the middle of the day or a glass of wine in the middle of the day. I don't even remember what my my go-to was at that moment. But it was realizing that I had the idea to day drink while I'm at home with my kids and there's no other adult around to parent them as a reward for literally nothing that I just saw in front of me two roads. And it was like choosing that drink was choosing between these two roads. You see, I struggle with moderation. Um, Like I'm not the type who can eat a single serving of chips and not just go overboard and eat the whole bag. And typically I don't even snack on one thing at a time. Like I do a full snack board. Like I need multiple snacks happening and I need to exceed the serving suggestions and I need to just feel like crap when I'm done. And so that's how I handle food. (laughs) Coffee. I can't have just one cup of coffee in a day. I actually get headaches from not having coffee. That's like like the the only addiction I have that's like a physical crutch addiction where like If I don't have it, my body tells me I'm in withdrawal and it's a problem. Um, Sugar is more of a craving that I just psychologically want to satisfy. Uh, Binge watching TV is a psychological sort of addiction, not physiological. Um, Coffee is the only physiological one. But I struggle with moderation. I struggle with telling myself I can have a little bit. The whole 80-20 rule thing, like I can't do that because I always give myself extra. Like I can't, you know what I mean, yeah? I struggle with moderation. I struggle with saying I can have a little bit right now and then say no to it next time. 
it's always, I can have a little bit now and say no to it next time. Every single time it comes, I'll have it this time. And next time I'll say no. And the next time never comes because I do it again saying I'll have a little now and none next time. That's how I struggle with moderation. And it was in realizing that I view alcohol the same way. And if I allowed myself to start drinking in the middle of the day, when am I going to tell myself to stop? If I, you know, before I was only drinking socially or I would only drink when my husband got home. And I was like, but if I open myself up to drink in the middle of the day, not socially, just by myself, when do I draw the line and say, that's a problem? And I could see in my mind a fork in the road of two options for me. It was either I quit drinking and I become fully present in the moment and I take care of what I need to take care of emotionally, mentally, whatever, or I choose to numb it out and I choose to go down the road that leads to the type of alcohol addiction that I have seen in other family members. I watched multiple family members struggle with alcohol addiction my whole life. And it was like at this moment I could decide, do I want to just quit and show myself that I can quit? Or do I want to go down the road where this possibly becomes my future, where this possibly becomes a problem? Do I want to control my alcohol or do I want to let it possibly control me? And it was like standing there looking at those those two options that I, I had to decide right then. Did I want to choose the unfamiliar road that involved me facing my demons? Or did I want to take the one that I'd seen adults take when I was a kid where I would just drown the demons in alcohol? That was my choice, and I got to make that choice at that time. And we get to make a choice every day on what we're going to allow in our lives. What I want you to take away from this story is that you don't have to hit what you think is rock bottom before you give up the destructive behaviors. Your personal rock bottom doesn't have to be as low as you've seen others go. You can literally quit anytime. You're in control of your own life. What other people are going to think and say and judge you on is none of your business. It's completely out of your control and it honestly doesn't even affect your life. What other people think of you and say about you has zero effect on you. Okay? If you never knew that someone was judging you, think about this. If you never knew that someone else was judging you on something you did, it would literally have zero effect on your life. The only effect it has is when you know about it and it's how you choose to respond to knowing about it, whether you're going to let it bother you or not. That is literally the only effect someone else's judgment has on your life. What someone else thinks only has effect on how you allow it to bother you because if you didn't know what they thought, it wouldn't affect you in any kind of a way. So I want to say that whether you're struggling with the desire to give up a substance or a food addiction or coffee or even just a bad habit. Maybe you're trying to give up negative thinking or criticism, whether it's of yourself or of others. It's hard to make change and to live with the change. That is one of the hardest parts to me. Not just the choice But living in change, change can be so hard, but it's beautiful and it's necessary. And the thing is, is that life is always changing and it just gets harder and harder if you don't change along with it. But I get, I get what it's like to, to want to kind of hide away where you feel safe, but it's not safe to not change. It's not safe. It's not safe to stay the same. When the world is always changing around you. All right, we're moving, we're in fall now. The trees are changing. The weather's changing. 
our schedules are changing with kids going back in school and all that. Like change, we are on the cusp of change and you can embrace it or you can fight it. Are you going to go out there and start stapling leaves back on trees? No. I, I feel like so much of my audience is excited about fall like I am. But are we going to embrace change personally too? Or just change in the weather? So whether you're struggling with an addiction or a habit, habits are basically addictions. We're addicted to our habits is how I see it. And that's the way I've overcome so many bad habits was viewing them as an addiction and giving myself grace and realizing I'm just addicted to that behavior because I'm used to that behavior. And when I try to change that behavior, my body gives me withdrawal signs and it freaks me out. It's moving through that. Keep going because abundant life is on the other side. So see the addiction and habit for what it is. And it's a distraction from your fullest life. The first step is realizing and admitting the problem. The rest is somehow easier. The actual next steps are easier. It's staying committed and consistent. That's really the hard part. But I promise it, it gets better. Life always gets better when you allow space for it to get better. There's always more available. That's the beautiful thing. You're never the best at anything. You never have all of anything. There's always more. There's always a next level. Like, there's so much. So much hope and love and peace and ease and everything out there. So much abundance and blessing waiting for you. You just have to keep moving towards it. Now my tips, my tips today are to be mindful of where you are in life and what you're doing. Pay attention to your habits and your patterns. If you're just living day to day and you're not taking inventory, it's really easy to lose sight of what you've got and where you're going. Be intentional with where you're going. Know where you want to go and be aware of where you are so you know how to get there. Be genuinely grateful for where you are right now and all you've got in your life. Be genuinely and deeply grateful. And embrace change and embrace success in your life. Don't hide away in the habits that you've built for yourself. And don't give a crap about what anyone else thinks. Because there will always be people who don't want you to become your best self. There's always going to be people who don't want you to be better than you are right now. There's always going to be people trying to hold you right where you are because they feel safe with you here. Sometimes... The person trying to hold you right here where you are and not let you move forward, not let you grow, sometimes that person is you. Sometimes that person is an inner voice, your imposter syndrome that just tells you, hey, we're safe right here. We know what it's like to be right here. We don't want to get better. We don't want, we don't want to grow. We want to stay like we are right now. But the thing is... Life finds a way. Life insists on growth. You cannot stay the same. You have to be growing because life is growing. The universe is constantly expanding. You have to be constantly expanding along with it. Now is the time in the season of change. Do the things you need to do to elevate your life and move to the next level. Do the things you need to do to let the mundane pieces of your life be easier. Do the things you need to do to not be distracted by your habits and your patterns and your addictions. Let it go. Leave the past in the past so that you can move forward into everything you're meant to be. So that you can do everything you're meant to do. Your purpose in life, it's not just to get by. 
Your purpose isn't to do dishes and wash laundry and constantly feel behind on these mundane home care tasks. Your purpose isn't to be constantly falling apart, held together by duct tape and bailing twine. Your purpose is to grow and to encourage growth in others. Whether it's your kids, your friends, your family, the internet, your purpose is for growth. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of I Get To. It really does mean the world to me to have you here. But are you ready to take this a step farther? Check the description below this episode and grab the Happy Mom Mindset mini guide. It's totally free to you and it's not just for moms, by the way. Then hop onto Instagram. Let me know what you thought about this episode. Share your screenshot. Tag me, Britt Clarkson. And if any part of this has resonated with you, I so, so appreciate if you'd leave me a review and a rating on Apple Podcasts. It really is just the only way podcasts get seen. And then share this on social. Text it to your bestie. You're part of a movement now. We're here to change the minds of moms everywhere. It doesn't have to be just this hard, hot mess thing anymore. We get to enjoy our lives, guys. Let's go.